than it is to just throw every function onto one screen, make it compatible with Apple CarPlay. I personally think that Tesla's not even having buttons and the fact that you switch gears on a Tesla on that main console, the fact that that is legal is insane to me. The fact that Tesla's have the actual gear shift in their main dashboard on the console unironically insane and should be illegal video by telling you about something very dumb that i did recently and i'm going to preface the story by saying that this was entirely my fault there are probably 50 things i could have done differently to avoid what ended up happening but i didn't and that's on me. So I got a new car last month. For most of my adult life, I've been driving a 2012 Honda Civic that I bought from CarMax in 2015. I'll never forget the day I rolled up to my job at Popeyes and felt like the coolest guy in the parking lot. Took the oh max God. part of the sticker. Drew here looks like that one dumbass on Instagram that is like an Andrew Tate writer. The one who's always like, quit your job right now. It's time to make money off of crypto. You know what I'm talking about? It's like one of my favorite guys that me and my buddies always share. Um, he's like, he, Luke Belmar. Yes, someone in the chat knew immediately. Dude, 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 this guy. Luke Belmar. Dude, he is so sick. He's also like weirdly. I think, yeah, this is the guy. Hold on. He, he's, he's so dope. I love him. Where are his videos though? These are all photos. Why doesn't he post any of videos on his channel parking lot took the max part of the sticker off so it just said car on the back had a lot of fun back then and even though this car was very reliable for pretty much the entire time i had it it was starting to show its age and i got to a point where i kind of just wanted something that felt nicer to be in so i splurged a little bit uh traded it in for one of the coolest sports cars on the market right now a 2021 hyundai sonata now that's not the dumb part there are so many things about this car that are Massive upgrades over what I had before. There's a rear view camera. There's blind spot indicators. I don't have to plug my phone in anymore to play music. It beeps at me if I move one inch in either direction on the highway. It's a great car. But there are also things about cars made in the past decade that aren't necessarily better. They're just different. For one, why as a society did we get rid of the Prindle? I have spent the past 15 years of my life building the muscle memory of yanking around my car's joystick to tell it where to go. And now it's just buttons? And I don't have the muscle memory for that. I'm starting to develop some due to time passing. But for the first couple weeks I owned this car, I would have to stop looking this way so I could look down and see where the backwards button is. So that brings me to my story. I agree. Six days after I bought this car, I was leaving a U-Haul storage facility and the exit gate was open. Now I've been there enough to know that- Luke Belmar video. Would you, what do you think about a gold standard? I mean, how much gold is there in the world? It's limited supply. Who told you that? <laughs> well. <laughs> what do you mean, who told you that there's... Does this guy think there's an unlimited supply of gold in the world? Did he just say gold is an infinite resource? God, I love him so much. He's so stupid. All right, anyway, Sometimes, let's continue. Sometimes, even though the exit gate is supposed to close, it'll just not. So I gave it a couple seconds, decided, yeah, it's going to stay open, and started driving forward. And you will never guess what happened the exact moment I made that decision. Yeah, gate started closing. So naturally, I'm like, uh-oh, this gate is going to hit my new used car. I should move out of the way. So I hit the reverse button, start accelerating, and my car moves forward. Now, if you've ever been operating a motor vehicle that starts moving in the opposite direction that you intended it to, you probably know about the panic that sets in. And I was running out of time. I could feel the gate inching nearer and nearer. So in the heat of the moment, I very wisely decided to do the exact same thing that didn't work the first time. I hit the reverse button, hit the gas pedal, and once again, my car moves forward. At this point, the only thing I've managed to do is get more in the path of the gate. And before I could try my foolproof strategy a third time, it uh, crashed into the side of my car and the alarm went off and it made a big old scratch that'll probably cost a couple hundred dollars to get buffed out and repainted. I don't know the exact amount yet because I'm too embarrassed to tell anyone what happened. Anyway, I've had about a month now. To <laughs>
process this, and I'm of two minds. On one hand, it is kind of hilarious that I waited nine years to buy a new car and I couldn't even get through one full week without fucking it up. I would love to see the security footage of me stopping in front of a closing gate, quickly accelerating, stopping, accelerating again, stopping again, before getting out and yelling, God damn it! It probably looked really funny. But then, on the other hand, I am kind of like, well, what the fuck happened? Cause like, I know that I hit the reverse button two separate times and both times my car just decided not to do it. I tried recreating this exact scenario in a parking lot to pinpoint exactly where I went wrong. And my best guess is just that I hit the accelerator and the reverse button at the same time, which triggered the car's computer to be like, hey, you can't do that. You're gonna hurt the transmission. Let's hurt the side of the car instead. And like, it's a good thing that there's a mechanism in place to prevent the car from changing gears when you're moving too quickly. If I hit the reverse button while driving 70 miles per hour down the highway, I actually would want my car to ignore that. I'm pretty sure there was a similar mechanism in my old car. The difference is, though, that if this exact scenario happened while I was driving that one, there would have been physical feedback to tell me it was still in drive, and maybe I would have been less likely to floor it twice. In order to get the same confirmation from a button, you have to press it, look down at the dashboard, find the part that indicates what gear the car is in, process that information, and then react accordingly. And even if you can do all that very quickly, it still takes longer to send that information to your brain. I mean, he's literally correct, 100%. And there's a reason why uh, haptic feedback or tactile feedback, is that what it is? Like, is, is a necessity for a lot of these, uh, for, for a very long time. Ne arıyor olabilir? Hayvan. Evet, hayvan. Hayvan oğlu hayvan hem de. Hep böyle yapıyor, onu söyleyeyim her zaman. Kaya down. My dad is in shock that my brother just comes into the house, takes all of his clothes off, literally in front of the the door the main door and just goes to work i guess i don't know what he's doing he, he's like shocked he's like what is this is there's just like pants and stuff everywhere and i explained to him that this is common process that he does this all the time and that he is an animal then if you can just feel where your hand is and again I'm the dumbass here. There are so many things I could have done differently. If I had just immediately accelerated as soon as I got to the gate, I would have made it through with time to spare. I also could have taken three extra seconds to just type my code in. I even could have stayed in bed all day and never gone anywhere near this gate, and that would have been a better decision too. But unfortunately, I didn't do any of those things. I did this, and I'm gonna have to live with that for the rest of my life. But my funny little mishap got me thinking about all these things I've seen over the past couple years of people getting screwed over by like modern features in their cars. And it made me want to do some research about it. And my takeaway is that while it would be untrue to say that cars have gotten worse, I do think they've gotten dumber. I looked up why cars made the shift from the Prindle stick to just buttons or a touch screen on the ceiling or a wheel that's right next to the volume knob that hopefully has never caused a hilarious but unfortunate accident. And it turns out the main reason is just that the stick is not necessary anymore because you're not physically changing the gear. You're just telling the car's computer what to do. Which like, I get it. You know, I'm not here to stand in the way of progress. I just think that if you have to create a new problem in order to fix something that wasn't really a problem to begin with, you're not being as innovative as you might think you are. Without a doubt, my biggest personal gripe with how cars are made now is touchscreen dashboards. Almost 80% of new cars in 2022 had some kind of touchscreen display built into it. It's just the norm now. And on the surface- It's cheaper. That's it. That's it. This is cheaper. Spoiler alert. I hate it. I hate it so much. I, I hate it more than I hate the top of the hour ad break. And I really hate the top of the hour ad break. Which, by the way, if you also hate it and no longer want to see it, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account where you will get one free Prime subscription a month. You can also get gifted a sub. Here's a streaming ad break now. 
this, it seems like an improvement. I mean, obviously this is more advanced technology than this, gross. I bet this one doesn't even have 12 different menus I can flip through to try to figure out how to get my turn signals on. It just doesn't make much sense to me when there's already such a massive increase in distracted driving and accidents and deaths that happen because of it, that they're adding this thing into cars that you literally have to look at to be able to use. There's a Swedish magazine that ran this test a couple years ago where they had people drive 12 different cars down the highway and timed how long it took for them to complete the same series of tasks in each of them. And the winner by far was a 2005 Volvo. Now this doesn't mean that 2005 Volvo is the best car. It just means that for basic tasks like changing a radio station or turning the AC on, Physical buttons that you can memorize the location of are the quickest and safest way to do those things. You don't have to look away from the road to be able to find where the button is. I think ideally modern cars are built with the right combination of actual buttons for basic tasks and the touchscreen for more advanced features, most of which you don't really need to use while driving anyway. And it does seem like some of the companies that maybe over embraced this technology a few years ago have started to peel back and find a happy media. But what absolutely drives me crazy is cars that have consolidated the entire dashboard into one giant iPad. Windshield wipers, we put it on the touchscreen. Want to turn the air down a little bit? We put it on the touchscreen. I think the irony of these I kinds of interfaces is that they give the illusion of luxury. This certainly seems like the more innovative option until you realize that the main reason they're so prevalent in cars now is because it is the cheapest way to build one. It actually costs a lot of money to engineer all of these buttons and switches and to have the wiring. Doing all of that in software is a lot cheaper. It is more expensive to produce actual knobs and buttons than it is to just throw every function onto one screen, make it compatible with Apple CarPlay. Brother, the only reason why I know that is because I too hate all of this shit. <clears throat> is it taken like that? Yeah, it is. I personally think <clears throat> that Tesla's not even having buttons and the fact that you switch gears on a Tesla on that main console, the fact that that is legal is insane to me. The fact that Teslas have the actual gear shift in their main dashboard on the console, unironically insane and should be illegal. The stock delete for turning signals is worse than the gear shift change. Wait, you, you, how do you do? I don't even know how you do the, the turn signals. Newest Teslas have turn signals as buttons on the steering wheel. Why? Wait, my Tesla gear shifts on the right wheel click. What do you mean? Turn signal left click. No, the new Teslas literally have the gear, uh, the gear shift on the main panel play and call it a day. And then when something goes wrong, it's just a software problem. We'll figure it out. Or maybe we have to replace the entire thing and it's going to be $4,000. Who's to say? And I didn't even mention the fact that if the screen does end up malfunctioning in a car that's entirely reliant on it, it's not just a minor inconvenience. It means you can't drive the car until it gets fixed. Some of the extra hoops I've seen people have to jump through in order to accomplish basic tasks now are mind boggling. You know how sometimes you have the AC on, but it ends up blasting right into your hand. So you have to reach over and change the direction of the vent. Well, that's fucking dumb, okay? That's how a caveman would do it. It makes way more sense to go on over to the car tablet, find the AC control button, select the air vent you want to change, and then drag it where you want it to go. Oh Loki, one of the worst parts of the, the take hand that I own is this precise process. There's a there's a system where like it's called diffusion or direct and you literally have to go to the panel you are, you can like move the air vents there's no manual moving of the air vents you can only move the air vents through the panel it is deranged it is so f stupid yeah all while barreling through a school zone. While watching a bunch of videos of car dashboards I happened upon this 1989 Toyota and there's something so beautiful about it look at that subtle burgundy oh. interior the tasteful thickness of those buttons oh, oh my god it even has a seat belt but i'm aware that i'm dude the f best dude i love toyota so much they are honestly is peak dude it's peak engineering i still drive my camry from time to time when my brother's not driving it or when my dad or my mom is not driving it it's the best still got that shit dude still got that piece of shit 2010 toyota camry Gave the myth for a while.
over romanticizing the past a little bit because if i truly wanted a car that looked like this i could have just bought one like i do want modern features i do want a car that's able to do the things that my phone can do but if these things are implemented in a way that forces you to look away from the road in order to be able to use them I think we should reconsider how we got here. At this rate, it's only a matter of time until cars start shoving ads in our faces. This car ride is brought to you by Opera, the smarter way to browse the web. Oh, I was being kind of facetious about that. I've never been more organized online since I started using Opera. The fact that it'll automatically sort my different tab rabbit holes into their own islands, so I'm not constantly- That's pretty cool. That's a really good segue. Respect. overwhelmed by the uninhibited whims of my own brain has legitimately changed my life. Wait, can I really not skip this? Not only does Opera have a free ad blocker built directly into the browser, but they also have a free VPN included with no additional fees or extensions you need to download. I do hate Opera though, only because like they're one of the people on their social media team was literally trying to do ads by shitting on me. And I will never forgive, nor will I ever forget. They can suck my opera, never use opera. Opera can suck my You think that you think you're slick, dude? Oh, look at me. I'm memeing. I'm so edgy. Ooh, you go use Firefox. I'm a Chrome user myself. Don't ever use opera. When I told my grandpa, he couldn't believe it. You know, back in my day, you had to pay good money for a VPN. Now they're just giving them away for free. I'm just trying to use the GPS, man. And on top of being more functional and more secure, I think opera just looks better. I love that you can have an animated wallpaper as the background of your homepage. I love that you can pin the sidebar if you want to keep an Instagram or TikTok page open or have it close automatically if you're trying to get work done and need to keep the endless scroll at arm's length. There's there's even a battery saver feature you can toggle on and off that'll help you get the most out of your laptop before having to get up and finally charge it. It does sound pretty useful, actually. Upgrade the way you use the internet, download Opera for free using my link in the description. If you scroll too far, don't worry, it's also in the pinned comment. Thank you to Opera for sponsoring today's video. Wow, I'm convinced. I'm going to download Opera on my computer and smartphone today. Now, where am I? Oh, great. Hi, honey. Yep, I drove into the ocean again. Cars have been around for about a hundred years now, and it kind of seems like maybe we figured out the best way to make them and ran out of ways to meaningfully innovate. But that doesn't really work when you're trying to get people to buy a new one every single year. So you have to find something you can add to make it seem like there's been a big improvement. Things like door handles that retract into the car, which I guess is- Sucks. Dumbest thing of all time so stupid makes no dang sense hate it uh, and it's also hard the porsche ones also have this my take on also has this shit sometimes my fingers get stuck underneath it because the car automatically tries to lock itself because it's got that like proximity the key proximity thing so maybe like sometimes it thinks i'm walking away from the car rather than walking towards the car it's good for drag reduction which means less fuel consumption it's just so Annoying. Also, I don't live in an icy area, luckily, but if you are living in an icy area, there's a bitch to get off too. It's aerodynamics and designers like clean lines. Also, is your take on not spring loaded? Surely it is. It's cool. I don't know if I've ever thought of the handle sticking out three quarters of an inch as being an issue, but I'll admit it adds some sleekness to the car. And it's not like it's making things worse, right? What's that? If it gets too cold outside, the handles don't work anymore. Yeah, no, I could see how that might not be great. Tesla fixed this problem with a software update last October. You can just press this to pop the door open when the door handles are frozen. Great news, everyone. We've updated the app so you can now get into your car during the winter. So uh, consider that problem solved. But didn't you create the problem in the first We're place? We're actually not taking any questions at this time. My favorite thing about these door handles is no matter how many times I get an Uber driver that's in a Tesla, I don't know how to get inside. I'm sure it's very simple, but clearly I'm struggling enough as it is. One thing I haven't- Shutters are so funny about the fuel consumption thing because you like, you literally get like, I assume 10 to $20 in fuel consumption, but in the winter time, you just can't get in your car without an update from your phone. What happened to Megaphonics? Why'd they get clapped? It's literally so simple crying. Clueless, yep, it's very simple. Fuel consumption is better if you take the other seats out of your car. You don't get it, Hassan. I think Megaphonics just gets like really horned up because we're talking about Tesla and he just posts way too hard and Fossabot auto claps him. I haven't seen as many people talk about, but has driven me crazy for the past few years is 
headlights are getting brighter, right? No, Megaphonix sold his Tesla. He's no longer a Tesla owner, if I remember correctly. Hey, like, that's not just me. I cannot tell you how many times I've been driving down a two-lane road at night, and a car passes me with headlights so unbelievably bright, I cannot see anything for, like, 10 seconds. I Hopefully hate that shit. Another f***ing annoying thing is... Uh, trucks they have blinding headlights and they're really high so even if they're behind you you're like i can't see anything man what the f is going on Lee, i'm still in my lane i guess i'll find out soon now this is one of those things it's a double-edged sword right because in theory brighter headlights should make driving safer because visibility is improved but i feel like it has to negate a little bit of the safety when those headlights don't just hit the road and instead shine directly into the eyes of oncoming drivers i looked it up and the two things that are causing this are one manufacturer is using leds now instead of the softer and yellower halogen bulbs from the last couple decades leds tend to be brighter and more compact so they hit even harder when you're staring down the barrel of one. Oh, this one for sure. But the other reason for this is a byproduct of something that I think is in itself a problem, which is that cars are so much bigger now than they've ever been. So if you're driving a sedan yeah. in the opposite lane of a brand new Suburban, those lights are gonna have to go through your eyeballs in order to hit the road. There's something a little paradoxical about the safety of cars now where they are much safer than they've ever been, while also posing more of a threat than they ever had. A brand new truck may have great safety ratings because it's twice as big as every other car around it, but now every other car around it has to worry about getting demolished by a truck that's twice as big as them. Pedestrian deaths in America have skyrocketed over the past decade, and I don't think it's a coincidence that that's happening while- Yeah, they're kid killers, straight up. It's the child mutilator, dude, because they can't see. They're so goddamn- large that it, you're basically operating a commercial vehicle that you need a separate license for but it's your regular daily driver and obviously because it's so high you can't see children walking across the street so you just run over them and mutilate them all cars continue to get taller and heavier for mostly no reason other than because they can because yeah, they, they can line up eight kids in front of a truck and the driver can't see them it's crazy how they get authorized with the road what do you mean? It's like eight in a row, baby. Let's go. Now, nine children. If you were to kill nine children in a row, that'd be too much. Eight children, though, perfectly fine by me. There's no regulations stopping them from doing it. And if a truck being way bigger than it needs to be is what convinces someone to sign up for a $1,200 a month car payment, why would those car companies have any incentive to stop? It's created this cycle where I think a lot of people feel like the only way forward is to fight fire with fire. Everyone else has a giant car? Well, I guess I need to get one for myself. I remember seeing this post a few months ago where this guy talked about how lucky he was to have been- it's cafe Cafe standards too. Truck sizes are directly a consequence Driving in such a gargantuan SUV when he got in an accident because he and his family were able to walk away unharmed. And obviously that's great that they're okay. This could have ended very tragically and I'm happy that it didn't. But for someone to see this and their takeaway to be, see this is- Bro, he said, do not put your family in a small car. That's not a small car. Hello? Oh, that's the point he made? I was thinking about cafe standards, my bad. This is why everyone should buy the biggest SUV they can because it's the only way to keep your family safe. You're not taking into account the fact that in a lot of cases, these giant trucks and SUVs- Bro, it's so ironic. It's like, an, it's like the nuclear arms race, dude. It's like mutually assured destruction. Americans are literally one note. They are one speed, bro. It's like, yeah, well, our enemies are going to get nukes, so we got to have nukes. Bad guys have guns, so good guys have to have guns. Well, not everybody has guns. Not bad guys even have more guns, so we got to get more guns. The American ability to look at a problem and literally cause more of the same problem in an effort to solve said problem will never be, I mean, will, will always be hilarious to me, but also simultaneously very scary. Hassan has been in more car accidents. I've been in two car accidents with two inanimate objects. Wait, what are you talking about? No, I haven't. <laughs> why are you? Why are you just lying? But it is pretty funny because not only did you just make up something, but you also simultaneously voluntarily admitted that you've been in two car accidents with two inanimate objects. <laughs> Hassan, come on, man. We don't have a car problem in America. We have a children lateral quickness problem. That's true. It's because of cafe regulation, corporate average fuel economy, has less stringent requirements for trucks and SUVs. SUVs 
are the danger. Since the introduction of SUVs, there has been a massive increase in what are called front overs. A person, usually a child, getting run over by an SUV by a driver who can't even see them. Over a 10 year period, over 500 American children were killed by being run over by SUVs. I mean, shit, why stop here? I think every American citizen should drive around. This is so in my wheelhouse of interest. Like this entire video is just like one pre-watch after the next because like I have molded about virtually every single thing that he's talked about so far. Great video. Found in a military. Also phenomenal, not just bikes mention. Grade tank. Yeah, we might run over a few more kids, but as long as they're not my kids, who gives a shit? Now, of course, I cannot make a video about cars that are bigger than they need to be and dumber than they need to be and more dangerous than they need to be without talking about the one that lies squarely in the oh, cross section of Cyber that Venn diagram. Cyber truck. Cyber truck. Oh, yes. Oh my god. Oh, let's go. Oh, compounded by the the lack of uh, pedestrian infrastructure. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It's it's so American to consistently pile on to the existing problem and and create additional problems in an effort to make sure that we never fix the underlying problem at all, all at the behest of capital interest. It's great. <laughs> You're biased. If children had cars for themselves, they wouldn't die. True. Tesla Cybertruck. Welcome to the Cybertruck unveil. Yeah! It is literally bulletproof. Yeah! Ultra no. hard stainless steel. Really hard. Yeah! Of course, it will come with autopilot standard. Uh, Franz, could you try to break this glass, please? Oh my fucking god. So this awesome car, which looks like when you first boot up a video game and not all of the textures have loaded in yet, was announced a couple years ago as starting at $40,000. Fast forward to today. Anyone who is driving one of these right now, the bare minimum that I've seen any of them spend 100 grand. One of the biggest reasons for this absolutely bonkers price jump is this $20,000 foundation fee. That's right. It's so awesome. They're so like they are brilliant why because they know it's dumbasses that will go and buy it. it so why shouldn't they get charged extra for you know openly it, it literally is they might as well have called it a tax okay there's an additional fee tacked on that is almost as much as what i spent on my entire car so you're probably dying to know what that bonus gets you well some people who paid for it don't even seem to know twenty thousand dollars for it being a foundation series now i don't know what that really means or anything but yeah i paid it because i wanted the truck so at first i thought it was just that it says the word foundation on it which would be really funny but apparently most of what that fee is meant to be attributed to is the self-driving fee that you would otherwise have to pay a separate monthly fee to access except it doesn't have it it doesn't have it yet but it doesn't have it of course it will come with autopilot standard now one tiny little thing to note about this feature is that it is not available yet and oh, no one can even ah yikes oh that's so awkward thank you for your donation to the billionaire dude oh so awkward oopsie there is nothing that frustrates me more than Elon dick riders in 2024. I guess like Israel dick riders is the only thing that frustrates me more. In 2024, the year of our holy lord, he has so consistently you over and you're at this point you just deify him. You deify him, you think he's a deity, you are a peasant, you are a surf, you are demonstrating peak level surf mindset. Straight up. My lord sheep. My lord is so kind to me. I've voluntarily given more of my grain for me, Lord. Me, Lord, my daughter tried to hide that she's getting married. But as we all know, Prima Nocta is your divine right. Please, my daughter, and defile her, me, Lord, on the night of her wedding. I've bagged her for you personally i've tied her up with a rope and put her in a sack for your convenience hazard a guess as to when it will be so as it currently stands the only thing this twenty thousand dollar fee gives you is priority access to a car that's littered with problems <laughs> Oh shit. Oh, we already broke it. All right. So my Cybertruck 
is completely broken. My foot is on the floor and it's not moving. This gear selector for top, it just dropped down. Something's going on with the windshield. What? I got all these warnings I've never seen before. I'm trying to open up the trunk. I, I have a speculation. I've brought this up before and some people seem to agree with me. That bears repeating. I think nowadays, because of the concentration of wealth and the way that it works, nowadays I feel like people literally sell tech tech products to a group of early adopters that have a ton of disposable income. Half of them are literally just tech influencers in general. Like I feel like a lot of companies are now just making stuff exclusively for early adopters because they're so stupid. They they are so excited to be the first that they just voluntarily overlook so many of the issues. Basically beta testers, right? Like people who are people who are like, no, I, I will buy into this specifically because I want to be the first to use it. Apple Vision is a great example of this. Um, I, I think the Tesla Cybertruck is a great example of this. That pin, the the stupid AI pin product is another great example of this. Half of the guys that are doing it are also like either up and coming or already well established tech influencers too. And I think that's straight up who they're gearing their product towards not towards mass market consumption but instead just towards people who want to just say i'm the first to use this i'm not even kidding i, I think that they desperately knowingly make shittier products that get away with shilling at a much higher price point to the clout sharks uh <clears throat> and those uh, who are uh, influencers and those who want to be the first. Now, having said that, are there people who get swept up in the excitement and still purchase it for honest reasons and most likely get f***ed over? I, of course. Of course, absolutely. Like, I'm not saying every single person that, that buys shit like this is uh, doing it because of clout reasons or whatever. I'm sure that there are people who get swept up into it. Overall, though... I think the broader, like the, the real reasons why they make this kind of stuff is specifically because they think that these guys are great. These guys are great to sell to. Like it's, um, it, it's the early adopters are great. They have a lot of disposable income and they will voluntarily overlook many of the issues just to say that they're the first to use it. It won't respond. I'm going back and forth, trying to close it. It won't close. It won't close. It won't close. When the tailgate's down, the camera's showing you the street. I have had enough at this point i think i know more about manufacturing than anyone currently alive on earth i have to say i have really enjoyed watching videos lately from people who may or may not be in denial about the absurd amount of money wasted on this stupid car they'll make these update videos where they complain about so many things they hate about it and then be like and that's why it's a perfect car and i see that's what i mean early adopters have a tendency to literally overlook the failures simply because they are they're so caught up in the 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 vibes of being like in this little insiders club i mean there's only four thousand cyber trucks out there man it's like for a hundred thousand dollars from their perspective it's basically like purchasing a unique vehicle like a luxury vehicle that they never would be able to purchase there's only four thousand of them on the road and it's a hundred thousand dollars you can't buy a Maybach, or I mean, there's probably way more than uh, 4,000 Maybachs out there, but like you can't buy like those insane McLarens because that's like $500,000, $600,000 to a million dollars. From their perspective, it's like for a hundred grand, I get to have something exclusive. I have no regret. This car is definitely worth the hype. This thing right here is a fingerprint magnet. I just got my car washed yesterday and there's still water spots. I noticed that my roof was starting to come off. Their navigation system sucks. It's resting on the inside. It was like this when I picked it up. I definitely think it's worth $100,000. So included with the foundation series, you get all weather formats. And if Has the Porsche had any of these problems? F no, are you kidding me? Like, there's definitely issues with the Porsche. Um, There was like... There's like software issues from time to time, but oh, because it's an electric vehicle and also it's like, you know, this is how every f new car is, but no, the Porsche build quality is literally one of the most consistent and one of the best. Same with Toyotas. Happen to be the two cars that I obviously have driven and have owned for 
a long time. Um, but yes, Porsche build quality is insane. It's people that love people that love cars will almost always have a Porsche, and that will usually be their daily drivers. Only Axis countries, bro. Say what you want. They know how to make good cars, man. I'm sorry. Never buy a Hyundai or a Kia. They suck. I, well, I did used to have a Nissan, which is kind of in that same field. <sighs> Wasn't great. Like I said, um, Toyota on top. The amount of brand loyalty I have for Toyota is unimaginable. Those things are built to last. The Nissan Altima was like, all right. I mean, it was just like really, it was a car. It wasn't like the build quality didn't have issues with it. And Nissans are otherwise good cars. Remember chat, I used to want a 350Z when I was younger. That was my goal car. Okay. Yeah. Embarrassing. I know that was the car I liked to draw the most. That was the car I would draw all the time, as a matter of fact. And that was the car I wanted so bad. Now, yep, Need for Speed 2 Underground Chad. Yeah, it was great. Anyway, having said that, however, photos are the best. Undisputed champion. Undisputed champion vehicle. Every one of them is good. Toyotas from the 80s and 90s still run perfectly. That is not an accident. That is by design. It's just the best. Do you like Japanese cars like Lexus? I mean, I don't really care. I don't really like Lexus that much. Like, I am a... I think the Forerunner is better than the Land Cruiser or whatever. Or which one is the Lexus version of it? It's the Land Cruiser versus the... I know Lexus is Toyota chat. What are you talking about? I know. I know. I just... I don't like it that much. Guys, why are you... I'm a Toyota fanboy. I know Lexus is Toyota. Shut the f*** up. My brother had a Lexus. That he got as a hand-me-down from his grandfather. My grandfather. Our grandfather. I tried killing my 97 Camry for three years by not changing the oil, but that mother did not want to go. It's still out here driving. Marat has a Porsche now. He went and he got, I think it was like a super, he's an old uh, Porsche Cayenne. He got a Porsche before me. Really old one. And he fixed it up. And he's constantly tweaking it and constantly building on it. I also uh, gifted him a... Uh, a suspension package as well. GX640 uh, 460 is the Lexus upgraded version of the 4Runner. GX460 is also known as the discount Land Cruiser. Yeah, I think the Land Cruiser is infinitely better than the GX460. That's the one I was thinking of. <laughs> like the Lexus version of the Land Cruiser is not as sick, in my opinion. You just spend money on your brother. How nice, Lamau. Of course. He's a real piece of shit, but I love him. Wrong. LX is the Land Cruiser equivalent. Whatever. Whichever one is the Lexus IS 300 is the poor man's Supra. No, his Porsche is not uh, manual. Land Cruiser or a G wagon? Land Cruiser. You know why they're called 911 to remind Americans who to call when they crash their Porsches? Is that is that a meme? Do do a lot of 911 drivers crash them? I didn't know that, but it's not shocking. Those things are fast, dude. Boomer meme. I mean, Fiat fix it again, Tony. That's a boomer meme. Uh, Ford found. What was it? Found on the side of the road, dead. Found on road, dead. Ford. Jeep. Just expect every problem. Oh, another Ford meme is fix or repair daily. You could get the Boxster to scratch that Z itch. No. Why would I get a Boxster? <laughs> I can't fit. If you look right up here, there's a little Cybertruck logo. Wait, did you- Hey, wait, there's a meme for Lotus. Lots of trouble, usually serious. Lotus is like such a f marginal car that like- I didn't even know there were people that knew what it was enough to make a meme about it. Like half of this chat probably does not know what a Lotus is. Lotus is Toyota. No, back. I mean, I don't know if they are now, but were they always Toyota? I thought they were like, no, I'm pretty sure they weren't Toyota owned. Acura, Asia's curse upon rural America. What? Most reliable car brand, most consistently reliable car brand is a Toyota. Unless you get a Mirai, in which case, good luck finding a, uh, plutonium deposit or whatever the f uses to fuel itself what is it what does he use like uh, it's a it's a hydrogen car right <laughs> so dumb hydrogen is like six dollars a gallon yeah i saw a tiktok about a dude talking about how cheap mirais are mirais are toyota mirais specifically because it, the the hydrogen is so goddamn expensive i'm pretty sure i looked this up there was like one place where you can get it in santa monica that's number one and two you're paying one, one dollar per 
uh, mile. You're paying a dollar per mile. Mariah includes fuel with the lease for that very reason. Freaking Fango, dude. Just the number one renewable nerd. Even a larger nerd than Megaphonics. He literally knows everything about every renewable energy and and uh, car. I'm literally an EV journalist. I know. I, I It's just ridiculous. Ridiculous. Stop. I knew this too. Fango lo lives and I know the same things. Okay, you guys are both nerds. I'm making fun of him. Why are you saying I'm just as nerdy? Did you say floor mats for all weather? Well, never mind then. They should have charged an extra $50,000. Sorry, I should be more sensitive. These people are going through enough right now. It's bad enough their car is falling apart, but they're also getting relentlessly bullied. Cyber clown trucks for stupid. Give it to the stupid clown to spend their life away. And this guy just said gay truck. That's like a truck owner's worst <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> no! Don't say my truck is gay. Got him. I mean, destroyed, actually destroyed. If you want a gay truck, get a fucking F-150 electric, dude. That shit will power your house for three full days. How American is that shit? Think about that. That's crazy that the Ford F-150 electric has the capacity to be used as a generator to power your entire house for three whole days days that's so sick Air. i will say one thing i do really love about this car i mean byd does that too of course uh my chinese chatter zyvexal chirps in and immediately defend byd we know man we know okay the byd is sick it's got the best it's got the best like weird aesthetic package things like uh like the byd like i i see the byd tiktoks all the time i don't know why i have so many car related tiktoks on my for you page all the time probably for this reason but um byd has like these insane specs like for example they can do a light show with their um the the suv one the byd suv that came out recently has like the capacity to do a light show. BYD, bring your dollars. They um they can do that. They can, uh, which is lame as fuck, by the way. Don't misunderstand me. I think it's lame as fuck. I'm not that big of a fucking China stand that I'm going to sit here and act like those things are sick. BYD unveils sleek new electric hatch and 1,000 horsepower tri-motor Denza Z9 GTEV. Oh, the BYD also can like go in the water. Cars on a TikTok for you page fork found in kitchen yeah it doubles as a boat uh it has it has like this weird it has this like weird sound barrier thing that you can oh i think this is the one yeah <laughs> it has this weird sound barrier thing that you can use to to like not allow your driver to hear you like i don't i don't even know how that works it's just like very odd no, not like a, it's not a wall, like in a limousine. You just turn it on and it just like cancels the noise coming from the background. It's magic. Kenny would have loved this. Rest in peace, dude. Rest in power to Kenny. He would have loved seeing this car that doubles as a boat. Yeah, this is not funny, by the way. Cars only do this when they're in extreme distress. It's not funny, nor is it cute. Okay, you guys think it's cool, but like this car is actually under a great amount of distress right now. It doesn't know how to swim. Is this real? Yeah, it is. You're showing us car stuff is very similar to how my dad tries to bond with me, but he can't because I'm in uni, but you're close enough. So welcome back, dad. Bro, this car is so many millimino. It does not even matter. My whole TikTok feed has become retro racing set the house music. Mercedes just introduced a G-Class EV, which also does tank returns. That is what I was up in Beverly Hills for the other day. Only going to cost $200,000. Ugh, conspicuous consumption. Maybe I'll buy it. Maybe that'll be my next car. I'm, I'm going through all the... I'm going through all the nazi. And here it is, the Mercedes-Benz G580 with EQ technology. The very first all-electric G-Class. Dude, I f I hate Mercedes' electric vehicle cars are so busted. Like, they're so round. This one at least kind of looks like a G, uh, like a, like a G-Series. At least it still looks like a G-Wagon. But the other EVs are so f like ugly looking the eqs goes eqs goes hard no they don't bro they look hideous no the g-wagon doesn't suck i think the g-wagon sucks because of like how abused it is by like especially in um especially in like los angeles and shit it's like the worst people have g-wagons 
but I I still think it looks cool. Like I I've always thought they looked cool. To know about like this the old ones car. are so My sick. My name is Tony, and I welcome you to join this exclusive walk around. The G-Class has one of the most iconic silhouettes Mercedes-Benz has ever built. And as you can see with our Edition 1, the G580 is still very much a G-Class. It was important for us to keep what makes this model so unique, while also making it stand out from the combustion engine models. One of the big visual highlights is right here in the front with the new black panel grille that carries the G-Class specific radiator grille into the age of electromobility and ensures an unmistakable appearance. It is fitted with an LED strip that displays an amazing light animation. This brand new color, South Sea Blue... Dude, I hate this. I don't understand why they don't just... I mean, I do understand why don't they literally make like old school retro cars because of obviously like fuel consumption, which ironic, not fuel consumption, but battery consumption purposes because... They're trying to do everything they possibly can to ensure that, like, your car goes for at least 200 plus miles on one battery. This is so normal compared to the usual G-Class. Well, yeah, no, no, no. This is, like, this is similar. I'm just saying I hate the, like, oh, animated light Magno LEDs. It's only available for the electric G-Class. And on top, we offer the Edition 1 in four additional colors, every one of them a perfect match to this EQ-specific edition with all its blue details we will discover in the next minutes. For example, the protective strip, which is complemented by a blue stripe. The rims have also been renewed and aerodynamically improved. On the Edition 1, they are 20 inches in size and completely black. We also introduced blue brake calibers that complement the EQ-specific appearance of this special version. And as we are already close to the wheel, I'd like to say a few words about the electric drive concept of the G580. Because one out of four individual electric motors is directly connected to one wheel. As they are individually controllable, the vehicle offers unique driving characteristics, both on-road and off-road. We go into more details later. One small but very cool detail is located right here in the doors. The Edition 1 gets black doorknobs with an embossed G. Let's move on to the bonnet, which we have raised slightly for the all-electric G-Class. By doing this, we have optimized the aerodynamics and the pedestrian protection of the car. Furthermore, there's an additional spoiler lip on the roof that helps with optimizing airflow. Coming to the side of the car, you can see another aerodynamical adjustment we made. This guy is so German, I'm scared. He is the most German man. On the rear wheels, we integrated so-called... All right, I just... I, that, this is the extent of my car interest. Let's get back to it. ...is that the rear view mirror doesn't work. Its view is completely obstructed most of the time. I mean, if you want, you can just look down at the screen at the rear view camera, but that also becomes useless if it gets even a little bit dirty. And isn't driving through dirt kind of the whole point of having a truck? That's all they do in commercials. Now, if off-roading is the thing you want to do in this truck, good luck because it doesn't seem to know how to do that. My friend in the Forerunner wanted to take that incline challenge and he killed the it. The Subaru also went up that incline. The Cybertruck did not make it up that That's incline. crazy. Once we got to about the middle of the incline, it would stop. That's crazy. That is so, you are so useless. Lost to a Subaru. Subarus are awesome. What do you mean? What a useless car tried airing down to 30 psi but it still did not make it up the hill also you're not gonna believe this but part of his car broke while he was doing this how does this keep happening to be fair though look how easily it navigates this puddle of mud i mean if i tried to drive through that in my old civic i literally would have drowned but this truck can do things that i've never seen any vehicle do before yes technically this road is paved but they're still in the woods that's got to count for something this truly is the all-in-one vehicle you can drive out in the middle of nowhere and sleep there if you want it even comes with its own tent that you can attach to the back of the truck uh for an additional three thousand dollars now considering you can get a pretty big tent for like a hundred bucks you'd probably assume that this thing is decked out with premium features no it's just a tent a one inch thin mattress a couple of straps a zipper that barely works but since it's an official tesla product you know you're getting that signature high quality engineering oh that's not good 
broken. It even comes with a bicycle pump, so you can spend 10 minutes manually blowing it up. For $3,000, you should be able to hit a button and watch this thing assemble itself. It is crazy to me how much they're able to overcharge for the most basic shit. Cosmetically, this stainless steel, absolutely gorgeous. It does pick up the occasional fingerprint, if you touch it at all. But as long as you don't get in the car or anywhere near the car, you've got nothing to worry about. And if it does get a little- It doesn't even interface with the car's HVAC, which ought to be one of the big benefits of camping in an EV. Wait, what? You're braving the elements out there? You deserve it. A little spotty, not a problem. Just take it through a car wash. But if you do do that, make sure you put it on car wash mode first. Otherwise it'll break the truck and void your warranty. The Cybertruck does not work anymore. Listen to the noise this thing makes. That was a weird popping sound. So what did I do different? Today I went to the beach, took it through the car wash, make sure all the sand's off, then I pulled it in the garage and nothing. This thing is practically invincible. You can hit it oh with a hammer, God. you can hit it with a shopping cart, but if it gets any bugs on it, you need to clean that off immediately or you will ruin it forever. The Cybertruck is also famously bulletproof for some reason, although I'm not really sure why they've made that one of the primary selling points. When you shoot a normal truck, the bullets go in one side, straight through, and out the other side. You cannot hide behind the vehicle to be safe, so it's something to keep in mind. Keep in mind for what? Who are you marketing this car to, John Wick? The things they chose to prioritize while making this truck are baffling to me. Who gives a shit that it's bulletproof if the material they had to use to make it that way makes it so razor sharp you cut your hand every time you open the door? Who cares how strong the interior is if it can't even get wet? They're calling it a car made for any planet. Guys, why don't we start with making it work on this one? As far as safety goes, I've seen conflicting reports about this. There's a crash that happened between a Cybertruck and a Toyota Corolla. And if you look at the photos from the accident, you might think, wow, this truck is invincible. It barely got a scratch on it. Meanwhile, the guy in the Corolla is probably seriously hurt, right? No, he's fine. The problem with this rigid outer body is that cars are designed to crumple in an accident. I That's don't their understand way of how, this is the other part that I don't get. How were they able to get away with making a car without crumple zones? Like, I don't, like, that is just, like, basically completely unacceptable, is it not? Like, how did that pass inspection? How did they allow, how did the, because here's the thing, the regulatory bodies are supposed to do one thing. This is, like, one of the few things that the American regulatory bodies is supposed to make sure it doesn't you know it doesn't get sold at all if it doesn't pass that you guys want to know what happens when you don't have a crumple zone if you don't know and chad has already spoiled it but you become the crumple zone in in the car you are the zone that crumples so no well that's not the only reason why it's banned in the eu there's other reasons as to why it's banned uh, in the EU as well, because it's too sharp. You can't have a car so sharp, literally. That's like a, one of the restrictions. Because if you trip and fall near it, it can just like stab you in the f brain. Absorbing as much force as possible. If your car doesn't crumple, that force will be passed on to the passengers inside of it. So while the Cybertruck may look like the world's most indestructible car, a lot of people who know more about physics than I do aren't so sure this is a good thing. I think what Tesla has done the most successfully with this truck is make it so their target audience doesn't care about any of these problems. I've seen people online who are actively enduring nightmare situations still go out of their way to defend this company. Cybertruck broke down on my first road trip with my family, lost the back motor and was unable able to drive, had to get it towed two hours back home. Eh, first year problems. Always good to wait a year or two on a brand new model. I know this is an early three slash Y owner, but man, come on, I had to grab the Cybertruck. No, you didn't. And it definitely seems like you shouldn't have. I found this guy on Twitter whose experience perfectly encapsulates the Cybertruck launch. His truck broke. Why do you say all that? I thought he was saying the Cybertruck passengers were hurt. I guess not. Uh-oh, Tesla dick riders are in the chat. I thought the, the driver of that Cybertruck did get hurt. Austin Ox mentioned in this vid, unsure if you ever see it. I'm not at all. It looks like crap. It just feels like he jumped off that point randomly, lol. Pretty much immediately, he got that patented flashing red critical service error. Couldn't even drive it. Had to pull over. Since then, it's been in the shop for weeks with no word on how long it's going to take to fix. There's apparently at least 10 different things wrong with it. Wirehard Harness needs replacement, ripple and windshield, driver's seat rubbing on center console, headliner sagging, chip and foundation series dashboard trim. Oh. Dude, 
their build quality is so consistently poor it's crazy it's so bad and this by the way is also all teslas it's not just cybertruck all of the teslas have this shit. longest route thank you for the 10 gift this subs is will's car like this i don't know Maybe they cared a lot more about the plaid because it's like the most expensive one that you can buy, but fucking Cybertruck's pretty expensive too. So you're saying their builds are consistent? Yeah, they're consistently dog. No wonder Elon defends Boeing so vigorously. Yeah, it's like me defending the principle behind serving ads at the top of the hour because I do it as well, you know what I mean? Because at the top of the hour, there's a three minute ad break. And if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe for $5 or for free with the Twitch Prime. I connect your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. You get one free Prime subscription a month. Mobile connector provided with Cybertruck not charging the truck past 6 amps. Front misalignment. One side is higher. Rear side arch misalignment sticking up. It could be another month before this guy gets his $100,000 car back. In the meantime, they're making up for all the trouble they've caused him by letting him borrow a regular Model 3 Tesla, which he himself described as being filthy with a strong, unpleasant odor that has persisted even after he went to the trouble of cleaning it inside and out. And it is fascinating to watch this guy who has been absolutely fucked by Tesla continue to go to war on Elon's behalf. People often criticize what they don't fully grasp, but the moment you take the wheel of a Cybertruck, everything changes. What? You'll quickly discover that all other trucks pale in comparison, becoming obsolete in the Cybertruck's shadow. Hey guys, it's been like two weeks since you took my car. Are you almost done? Is there just a real feeling to have a Cybertruck but not really have one because it's still in service? Hoping they could swiftly install the new wire harness and tackle all the other issues. I miss driving my Cybertruck. Fixing it or... They've got it all twisted. Instead of comparing the Cybertruck to other trucks, they should compare the other EV trucks' features and capabilities to those of the Cybertruck. Wait, what? Other EV trucks? Doesn't the fucking F-150 electric clear this? And Rivians too? Like what? BYD also? Then it becomes clear just how superior the Cybertruck is and how the other trucks are stuck in the dinosaur era. Hey, my car has been in the shop for its entire life so far. Do you think I'm ever going to be able to drive it again? While other trucks are busy playing catch up, the Cybertruck is already in the future. Damn, bro. He is destroying this man's life. He is destroying this fucking man's booty cheeks right now. Slapping him left right in every direction that's crazy to be fair though this level of dick riding should be illegal this is criminal this level of glazing should be a crime but it is not okay being the undisputed champion hating on the cyber truck might get you more engagement and clicks but i'll never fake it to make it i love my cyber truck really wish i could get my truck back this weekend Still no update. Dude, if I was this guy, I would be furious. He has every right to be pissed off here. What? But he seems to be more mad at the people telling him he's been scammed than at the company that actually scammed him. I spent so much time this month watching videos of people driving this car and talking about this car and hating on this car. But at the end of the day, it's not fair for me to fully judge something that Baba. I've never even seen in person. Baba. Yine soyundu bak gel bak hayvanına. Just came back in. Murat immediately took off all of his clothes while looking at me. Everything is covered in in soot. I don't know what the fuck he was doing. Apparently he's like working on a, his car or something. It's just his white t-shirt is just all black. Uh-uh. You want to get out of here? I'm sorry. Is she antagonizing you with her freedom? messed up i know okay let alone actually driven sure i can pick and choose clips that fit the argument i'm trying to make but can i really condemn something i've never even stepped foot inside no but then i found out there's an app you can use to rent other people's cars for a day so i spent 700 dollars to pretend i own a cyber truck I love that sound. <laughs> this is my nightmare. Everything on this screen, nothing's here. <laughs> I don't like how many buttons I have to press to 
like turn the AC off. For a truck as big as this is, I don't love how sensitive everything is. The steering wheel, you barely have to turn it. You don't need to brake. I instinctively, when I'm slowing down, I want to take my foot off the accelerator and brake, but it brakes when you let go of the accelerator. So it's I like hate really that. jerky. I guess I, I would get used to that if I drove it more often, but so far it's just like, I feel like I'm really drawing a lot of attention to myself. Going to a Costco parking lot, probably a bad idea. Okay, well now he's just complaining about one pedal driving. Yeah, I don't like that either. I think it's weird. No, the steer by wire is a go-to feature. Also, you can turn down regen, but regen is great. Oh my God, fucking. This is why you guys will inevitably return to Tesla. Both Megaphonics and Fango lives. Both of you will inevitably turn back to tesla one is turning and looking when i drive i do not want to be perceived or looked at <laughs> that guy right there is stopping to, to look at us right now another tesla is looking at us he's like ah oh, my big brother when we got inside costco though something weird happened people stopped looking at me i had to get out of there as soon as possible look at all these normies only i'm in the cyber truck <laughs> <laughs> so many steps to open the mirror. They have something called karaoke. Good me, took to me, shook me, feeling me, singing for hard. Like a lot of reviewers said, why is that legal? It literally wants you to look at the dashboard instead of the road. What are these guys doing? That is like another classic Elon moment where it's just like such a stupid gimmick, and yet entirely should be illegal six inch touchscreen illegal 15 to 20 inch touchscreen legal it's self-driving though no and don't trust that fsd is not real it doesn't fully self-drive you cannot use this rear view mirror it is just complete darkness in there it is very smooth to drive it doesn't feel like you're driving a giant truck but I kind of wish it did. If you forget that your car weighs 7,000 pounds and you're driving it like it doesn't, like I just feel like it's way too easy <laughs> to accelerate as fast as you can and slice someone in half, which I'd rather not do. It was a beautiful spring day outside, so the next thing on my agenda was a romantic picnic in the park with my lovely wife. What's wrong? You've hardly touched your cereal. We don't want cinnamon toast crunch like out of banana instead. I've driven a little bit now. I'm pretty sure every time I've parked and gotten out so far, I've left the car on because I don't know how to turn it off. There's not like a button or anything, but I finally figured out it's very intuitive. You hit this and then was it safety, right? And then you scroll all the way down and you want to scroll past Joe mode. Don't put it on Joe mode. Um, you, and then you just hit power off and then, and then that's it. And that's how you turn off the Cybertruck. Getting the truck to fit into my garage was a no, you don't have to do this. It turns off automatically. I hate everything that I'm hearing. It's making me very mad. You want food? Oh, you want to be a part of the stream? Yeah, I heard you're talking about cars. Yeah, we're looking at uh, we're looking at Drew Gooden shitting on the Cybertruck. Joe promises. Joe made promises on all kinds of things and does a genocide instead. Yeah. Joe mode is when you offer unconditional support to the state of Israel, the genocidal state of Israel. Can you go like four minutes without? It's a lot closer of a call than I no. expected it to be. If I did Being own this the microphone. car, this would be quite the fun little adventure to get to go on every single day. And that's how you park a Tesla Cybertruck in your garage. Despite all my issues with the truck, the more I drove it around the city and felt the enamored <laughs> stares from me. Damn, bro. He didn't even have me on his timeline mesmerized bystanders i was reminded of what the guy i rented it from told me you'll feel like a celebrity and god damn it he was right i've never felt more popular what is that freaking brad pitt over there nope just little old me driving the best truck in the world please no pictures i'm a regular person just like you i like the way this car makes me feel i don't care how much it costs if it's not solid gold i don't want it Hey, can I talk to you for a sec? Sure, but make it quick. Ever since you've been driving that car, you've been acting kind of weird. How exactly do you mean? You're like a completely different person now. Oh, I see. 
You're jealous. What? You're jealous because I own the world's most awesome car. You don't own the car. You're renting it for one day. Oh, tell me how I knew you'd bring that up. Because it's true, Drew. I'm sorry, I can't deal with this right now. I need to go clear my head. I'm gonna take a nice scenic drive dangerously close to the edge of a cliff. We interrupt this slow motion car montage with some breaking news. Somehow the Cybertruck just got even dumber. Tesla has officially recalled all 3,800 of the vehicles due to a problem with the accelerator pedal. Turns out the pedal has a cheap plastic cover over it that's been fastened on so poorly it's sliding off, getting lodged under the piece in front of it, and causing drivers to go as fast as this stupid car can go. It held the accelerator down 100%. Full throttle. This is a real thing that's actually happening. We here at Channel 300 News urge you, if your husband is about to drive one of these death traps near or around a cliff, you must go stop oh. him. His life could be in danger. Honey, I just saw on the news. Who's a big, strong truck? That's right, you are. I had to give the truck back last night. It was one of the hardest moments of my life. Technically, I still had a few hours left on the rental, but Amanda said she felt weird or something. I don't know, it's all a blur. <laughs> Final thoughts on the truck. I think it should cost a million dollars, and I wish it had two accelerator pedals and no brakes so I could drive twice as fast and never have to stop. <laughs> Please subscribe. That's funny. Both trucks are fully electric. This is the dual motor cyber truck with 340 miles of range. This is the dual motor R1T with 410 miles of range. The Raven has a bigger front trunk with a drain. The cyber truck has a smaller front trunk with no drain. The cyber truck has a bigger <laughs> six foot bed, have built in power. If I lift up the floor, I get storage space with a drain and I have a built in bottle opener. Rivian has a smaller five foot bed. I Sick built-in bottle also opener. Also get power right there. I don't have a built-in bottle opener, but I do have a built-in compressor and I also get storage space. Cybertruck is stainless steel, so it doesn't scratch off road. Now for the Rivian. Just kidding, that, that wouldn't end well. But the Rivian has a step that folds out with storage space in there, and it goes all the way through. In the Cybertruck, I get these heated and ventilated seats. I get ambient lighting here in my dash, this giant touchscreen that controls everything in the truck. I get storage. It fucking sucks. The giant dash is just so bad. Okay, so here, two wireless charging pads and a cool steering wheel. In the Rivian, I also get heated and ventilated seats, a giant touchscreen to control everything in the truck. Another screen here, tons of storage space, a built-in Bluetooth speaker, wireless charging pad. I have a flashlight that's built into my door, and I have storage down here for the blinky. Uh -huh. Both trucks are fully electric. This is the dual motor cyber truck. With Satanic steel, not, not stainless. I hate it. I hate it so much. It's a cool gimmick. I'm into it. Of course you are. Just like... We figured it out, dude. There you go.